What's up everybody, it's your boy Mr. Clean, and today I wanna to talk about a laptop that I usually bring up when I make tech laptop deal videos. A laptop that usually retails between five and $600, but always comes with a very powerful i7 10th gen processor. And instead of simply just talking about it, I thought I'd bring it into the studio, review it, and kind of go over what they're sacrificing in order to get the price point this low. Now this is a very clean laptop. It's 15 inches, it's under four pounds. So technically it's an Ultrabook because of the CPU they're using, but it doesn't feel as light as the more premium Ultrabooks on the market. Yes, the top of it is a bit flexy and that's expected for a product at this price point. It's clean with just the HP logo in the middle. You can almost open it up with one hand. As soon as you get to the top, it kind of goes up a little bit, but it's completely doable. You do have a good selection of ports. Like on the left-hand side, you have a RJ45 jack, HDMI, USB Type-C. This is just regular Type-C with five gigabytes of data transfer. You have your power connector. You have two USB ports, and you also get a full-size SD card slot. Now, there's one thing I do want to mention. There is a bit of wobble with the display, like the display feels nice and tight when you open it up, but once it gets to the open position, you'll notice a little bit of waddle. It's not as bad as the Gigabyte Aero 15, but I still wanna mention it. Now the good news is all the standard stuff is not soldered onto the motherboard. So if you wanna upgrade the RAM to 32 gigabytes, you can do that. If you want to upgrade the SSD to something bigger or faster, you can do that too. This is the 256 gigabyte version and it actually gets really good read and write speeds. Now this is not a second place for a drive. This is just an empty slot. There's no way to connect a 2.5 inch drive to this computer. I kind of think they took the chassis from the Pavilion lineup, used it on this, and then removed the capabilities of inserting a second drive. The Wi-Fi card is not Wi-Fi 6, but at least you can swap it out down the road if you want to use Wi-Fi 6. Battery looks very small. It's only 41 watt hours, and I would have loved them to extend it across the bottom. But surprisingly, you get pretty good battery life. Seven hours and 30 minutes before needing to charge. The only downfall to the setup is the fact that there's only one heat pipe and one fan. Speaking of being adequate, this display is not. This panel, regardless of whether you go for the base one, which is the 1366 by 768 resolution, or this one, the 1920 by 1080, this SVA wide LED panel is just not good. Like, color accuracy, brightness is on the low end. So if you're planning on doing any design work with this, you definitely want to hook it up to an external monitor. On top, you do have a 720p webcam, and of course, even though this is a budget Ultrabook, it looks just as bad as every other webcam. Surprisingly though, the speakers are actually forward facing. They come through the top vent on here and have pretty good sound, like the highs are crispy and clean, just the low end is non-existent. Now performance is where this thing really excels. Like this is an i7 processor, 10th gen. It's the Comic Lake SKUs, not the newer Ice Lake, but overall it performs very well. Like good speeds, good performance for a laptop at this price point. Like even if I'm coding on this, it can handle it. If you're doing simple productivity, it's more than capable. Even if you want a game, if you opt for the MX250, which costs an extra $94, you can lower the settings down to medium, play at 1080p in games like Overwatch, and you're gonna get like good frame rates. Like I was getting 80 frames per second playing Overwatch. Now heat management is kind of interesting. Like if you're just blasting the CPU to its full potential, it does well. Like it will hover around 2.2 gigahertz, which is over base clock, and the CPU temps will stay around 70 to 80 degrees Celsius at the top end. But as soon as you start blasting the GPU and the CPU together to its full potential, that's when this thing starts to thermal throttle. But if you're playing games and if you're just using the CPU or going back and forth between the GPU and CPU in certain applications, this laptop actually holds up pretty well. Keyboard is interesting because it has very soft keys, which I'm not a fan of, but the spacing between the keys are good and it's very 
comfortable to type on. There's also a numpad if you need a full-size keyboard to crunch some numbers. Unfortunately, there is no backlighting. That's another area they had to cut back on in order to reduce the cost of this product. Touchpad is a good size. I don't like the clicky buttons. I would have just loved a bigger touchpad in general. It is made out of plastic, but for being a plastic touchpad, it's accurate. So here's the thing, a lot of corners were obviously cut to get the price at this point. But the one thing they did a very good job on is performance. Whether I was gaming or doing something more productive like editing light 1080p video, the laptop was able to handle it. I also love the fact that there's some longevity to this. I can open it up and extend its life with adding a new Wi-Fi card in, a bigger drive, or even upgrading the RAM. Yes, the display is not that great, the keyboard is soft, the sound is mediocre, and the overall build quality is nothing to talk about, but if you're on a budget and you're looking for great performance value, this is a very good option. And the fact that it's always around the $550 price point is a deal to consider. Anyways, if you have any questions about this, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure to follow me on Twitch as I live stream there every second night of the week. And I'll see you guys in the next video.